engage with their community. We've sat with traditional leaders all across northern Nigeria to get their input into how they engage with their communities towards strengthening primary health care, especially routine immunization. We've seen historically that because the traditional leaders were involved in polio eradication, we've gone 25 months now without a single case of one polio virus that has been reported. It is exactly the same pathway we're taking with routine immunization. You recall that uh, a few years ago in 2016, we had very poor routine immunization coverage. Now, working with the traditional institution, again, we're beginning to see an increase in routine immunization coverage. What we're doing here today is to symbolize how that engagement happens, how the traditional institution is involved in line listing children once they are born, ensuring that they go to the health facility for the vaccines, and then when there's an outreach in their communities, ensuring that all eligible children are provided with the vaccines. And if for adventure, either by omission or commission, any child misses their vaccinations, the traditional institution, our traditional leaders, will actually help track those families and ensure that those vaccines are given free of charge. So for us, we're really excited about what this really represents. So at the end of today, there will be manuals that all levels of traditional institutions will actually take home that describes their roles and responsibilities in a way that is easy to understand, in a way that they can also take back to their communities and really uh, cascade down in terms of training the lower level uh, traditional leaders. Okay, for sustainability purposes, what are the strategies that have been put in place? Sustainability, there's nothing as sustainable as the traditional institution, right? The traditional institution that we're involved in ensures that long after one administration leaves, right? The traditional institution is there, the traditional leaders are there, and this is why we have brought the community engagement framework so that they will drive it. They've always driven it. The only thing that we're doing is making sure that it is systematic all across northern Nigeria, but also learning from their experiences, discussing with uh, the traditional leaders uh, from southern Nigeria who replicate this. Again, most of the uh, routine immunization coverage uh, burden has been in northern Nigeria. This is why we're starting from northern Nigeria, but we're also beginning to engage with the uh, traditional leaders from southern Nigeria to see how we can better improve uh, on their community engagement. For example, we started with Bielsa, where we have meetings with uh, the Council of Traditional Leaders, and because of their intervention, we're beginning to see increases in routine uh, immunization coverage, uh, utilization of primary health care facilities in Bielsa State. So so why is, why is immunization so coverage uh, low in the northern part of the country? Well, there, there are multiple factors, right? There are issues around uh, lack of awareness. In a few a few years ago, you know, there was this issue around uh, oral polio vaccine safety. Again, working with the traditional uh, institution, we've been able to overcome, for the most part, those uh, resistance, non-compliance uh, to oral polio vaccine. Uh, oral polio vaccine. Uh, we are sure that in the course of the next uh, few months, uh, using the traditional institution again, people are going to be less hesitant people will now accept more of the vaccines. But the other issue is also around funding. A number of states do not provide dedicated funding for routine immunization and primary health care. Even when it is in their budget, they do not release the funds. But we've been engaging with governors, we've engaged with the Nigeria Governors Forum, we're engaging with all stakeholders, and it is very clear that moving forward, a lot of states now understand that uh, we cannot compromise on the health of our children and they are beginning to release uh, more funds because uh, there's now more transparency in the way these funds are utilized. Part of the problem has been you know, that concern that even if these funds are released, they may not be used in a way that is uh, judicious. But we're beginning to see a greater confidence in the system. So we hope that in the course, uh, in the course of the next uh, few months, in the course of the next few years, that uh, there will be more funding available for uh, not only routine immunization, which will bump up uh, the coverage, but also primary health care uh, as a whole. In terms of funding, this is one of the reasons why uh, the federal government is rolling out basic health care provision fund in the 
next few weeks. We are hopeful that President Mahmoud Buhari will launch the basic health care provision fund, wherein there will be an opportunity for mothers, guardians to take their kids to health facilities, right, and not be worried about out-of-pocket expenditure, My down, right? My down. The vulnerable groups in our communities, the under, children under five, uh, the aged women uh, who are pregnant, uh, women who are delivering, will now not pay for basic services in the health facilities. So this is another exciting thing that is happening in the healthcare space. So I'll, I'll ask you to really uh, stay tuned for when this launch takes place, uh, takes place, and then you begin to see how basic primary healthcare will be delivered to all Nigerians with compassion, dignity, and respect for all community members. Thank you very much. Thank you for your Reporters, move back. Open up for camera, please. Make them move back. Make them move back. Uh, I wouldn't want to call it a revolution, but I would definitely see improvements in progress. The number of children. This man should move back now. See, your back is in my shot. Everywhere in Northern Nigeria. Down, down, down. The law seems to be this guy is bad. Calm down now. Uh, Edie mentioned that by number. Leading amongst uh, which is uh, the issue of access. Uh, a lot of our communities don't have access to uh, private health facilities, either because of distance or because uh, the. Uh, routinely needed uh, medical and surgery to be available to finish. Uh, secondly, there is an uh, issue of uh, distrust. Uh, and uh, of course, the availability of, uh, availability of uh, uh, traditional means of uh, providing uh, care and cure to elders, especially in the villages. So these are uh, some of the factors that uh, inhibit parents from uh, Taking them to the How the of the child 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 of the the Okay, very quickly, sir. As a woman, I don't want to be partial, but do you have direct contact with women in this uh, fight? Yes, we have uh, what we call TBS, the traditional family members. Normally, after the day, we get direct from the mothers. But you must understand the situation in uh, tradition at all. The husband is the head of the family, and he makes decisions. So, what we do is that uh, we talk to the husband first because we know. They take decisions for the wife, daughter, son. It's a lot of people taking the rest of the day. So, um, most of the problem is actually uh, trying to change attitude uh, with regards to vaccination and uh, access to the lab. What was the role of the NTLC in the development of these people? We mobilize our police to represent the entire traditional system in Nigeria. And whatever we discuss, we take back. Uh, we are like, uh, like uh, the the development of the development of the development of the development of the the